Hey everyone, this is Al with Bobcad. So today I'm talking about how to fill holes on your surfaces. In this example, I have this part model here, and what I need to do is do some 3D milling on this top uh, spherical surface, but I don't want the tool to drop down inside of these holes here. So what we need to do is fill them up. Now there's a couple of different ways to do this, and uh, let's go ahead and jump in and look at what our options are. Okay, so the first option, if you've drawn the part inside of Bobcad, okay, there's a very useful tool that we have with the CAD history tree where you can come in and suppress features. When you suppress features, they go away. So this way we're able to remove the holes, do our surface machining, and then once we're done, we can come back and unsuppress our feature and build it back up. And that way we still have that within the CAD history tree. So that's one option if you've drawn inside a Bobcat. Now, if you've imported the file, which is common as well, uh, you may want to fill or plug these surfaces. So let's look at another option. One of the options you can do is you can go to utilities, stitching, unstitch solid to surfaces. Okay, so what that does is it breaks the model down into all the individual surfaces. And then from there, you can go to surfaces and untrim surface. And what this will do is bring that surface back to its original state before the holes were trimmed away. And you can see how now we filled in those holes and it's done a really good job of that. Um, we can also undo it to bring it back and then that way we can continue on with our process. So that's another option for you. Uh, sometimes you're dealing with more complex surfaces and uh, you may need an additional option because uh, when you untrim uh, a surface it may create uh, problems for you in other areas of the part. Uh, so that's where we're going to look at uh, generating a surface to fill in these areas. So the way that we do that is we'll create a new layer and make it active. Then we'll go to Utilities, Extract Edges, Single. And what I'm going to do is select on this, uh, this one here and I'll hit my spacebar to lock it in and what that's done is giving it's given me a spline curve for that uh, that hole uh, and when I select it you can see that it's a single entity okay so the first thing I want to do after I've created the wireframe is I want to divide it into two pieces okay so now we have a top side and we have a bottom side and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a surface on here and this is where it's a little confusing how do I generate a surface for this particular area um, the one that I use often is I'll use a cross-section surface and I'll select one side of it and I'll select the other side of it and that will give me a surface to go ahead and plug that hole so the tool doesn't drop down inside of there okay so that's another option for you now I, there, there's one other option that I could think of on this particular uh, model here is I could rebuild uh, the surface itself and then break the surface to get uh, another plug, okay? So uh, just another option, just uh, some of the think that can go on. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a section view. So I'll go to views, section view and I'm going to go to a front view. Okay, now I'm not getting uh, my, uh, my wireframe for that view, so I'm going to go to a side view. From the side view, I am able to get a, a cross section, which is good, so I'll go ahead and generate my wireframe. I'll turn off the solid, okay? So now this gives me the, the profile of this part. So what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to generate a new surface. So I'm going to join uh, from here to here and then from here to here. All right, so this gives me um, this uh, curve here. So what I want to do is go to a side view. I'm going to create another layer to separate out my surfaces. I'll do surface. Revolve surface, pick axis, this is 360. I'll select uh, this edge here, and then that edge there. So that now what I've done here is I've created a surface, uh, the same surface, and, and that way it's plugging up those holes. Now I may not want to have a surface on top of a surface like that, so the next thing that I might do, let me turn that layer off and turn this one back on, and then I'll go to a top view, is I'm going to extract this wireframe again. So I'll do uh, utilities, extract edges single, 
and we'll get this one, this one, and that one there. Okay, so now those are extracted. Uh, from here, I'm going to uh, break these uh, surfaces. So let's do, uh, let's see which one. Surface break. So I'm going to select the surface I want to work with, which is this one here. And then the curves that I want to break the surface with. Okay, so now what I've done is I've broken out those surfaces there and then that way we were able to plug them up. And all of these tools that I'm using here are uh, methods where you need to plug a hole that's on a curved surface so that the tool doesn't drop down inside of it. Okay, so let's look at that real quick. We'll set, uh, we should see that the tool is actually going to go down inside of those holes. See how it's going down inside of those holes? And we definitely wouldn't want that in the, or we may not want that in the roughing routine. In this example, we're saying we don't want it to go down inside of there. Uh, if we add uh, either of these cap surfaces that we generated and we go ahead and recompute, uh, we'll see that those surfaces will block the tool from going any deeper. Um, so you can see we no longer have that issue with them coming along the bottom. Uh, some of you may be wondering uh, why don't we just use the ignore holes option and that is an option that we have. You can go to ignore holes and depending on how those holes were generated uh, sometimes the software will ignore those holes uh, like it's done in this particular example, but sometimes it won't. So that's where this cap method comes in handy, where if it doesn't pick up the holes like it did in this example, then we would go back and cap in those surfaces. So, you know, hopefully uh, that clears up uh, some of the workflow you can use for filling holes and surfaces. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Uh, if you like the video, let's get a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, please comment below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much, guys.